Hey everyone, welcome back to Brownlow Books. It is my first book review back from my little September hiatus. Uh, so it is October 3rd? Yeah, it should be the 3rd. <laughs> um, by pure happenstance, my September book club, which we do completely by random, was reading An Inconvenient Indian, a curious account of Native people in North America by Thomas King. So this coincided with the fact that September holds the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. Uh, yeah. What I'll start with. This book is good if you don't really know about Indigenous history and you want to. I mean, every Canadian should, but you know, you've got some of those crackpots out there who say that having graves at schools is totally fucking normal. I fucking can't with those people. Media block. Um, <laughs> so, the way King sets it up, he does not start with Columbus. But uh, it is a good just kind of general overall sort of history of North America and its indigenous peoples, which there are a lot of, obviously. So he doesn't break it down like only, you know, these bands and tribes or only this area or anything like that. It is, it is Canada. It is the U.S. It is a generalized, overarching history with, you know, here is some things that happened. There's, there's lots of mentions of things, um, but like, also with his opinion of things. So this is actually tagged as humor and comedy. But one of my friends in book club said that it was actually tagged as dark comedy on whatever it was that she looked it up on. And, um, I mean, I see it more as like, here's a history of some of my people and I'm going to give you my opinion on it too which is sometimes sarcastic or a little humorous. So, you know, it's not, it, it's a textbook and a humor book had a friggin' baby and it's this. <laughs> um, so yeah, general overarching, which is great. Uh, several of our members said that they had to look up specific things that were being mentioned because they'd never heard of them before, but like it wasn't in depth in the book to know what he was referencing. Um, I had to look up maybe two or three of like the American things that happened just because I didn't I didn't know them I all the Canadian ones mentioned I knew of but I mean I devour new sites so maybe that's why I was given lots of books as a child I don't know I don't know I knew about things I knew about the things he was referencing I have read Canadian history books, so I guess maybe in there? I don't know. Anyways, doesn't matter. <laughs> Point is, if you want to be learning about Indigenous peoples in North America, good place to start if you're looking for nonfiction. So, this was written in 2012. And as you can see from the little seal there, kind of blurry. What? It is a Canada Reads 2015 selection. So three years after it was published and it was on Canada Reads. <sighs> what King I think did not see coming was this honker. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada report. So this is, you know, about residential schools. A honker. So yeah, that was done in 2015 when we had Stephen Harper as Prime Minister. Fuck that guy so hard. Um, so I think that's how this ended up three years after it was published being part of Canada Reads. Because they were like, oh, there's this thing we've got to deal with. Maybe we should, you know, actually pretend to care about them for a minute. So this does touch on residential schools. Not very much. It was, you know, they were set up. 
kids went there, kids went missing, you know, beat the Indian out of the child to save the man. Bullshit. Uh, if you have people in your life who defend John A. Macdonald for what he did and the Catholic Church, etc., tell them to go fuck themselves. That's from me. All right. So, <laughs> definitely did not see that coming in this. Um, we know now, you know, there's, there's proof. I mean, if we had just fucking listened to them in the first place, but no, it took, you know, ground penetrating radar for us to go, oh, okay. So yeah, if you're a Canadian who actually cares, you should be reading this book. I'm not going to go on a long tangent about residential schools. I feel like I've been there, done that already. You know my feelings. I'm not going to put you through it again. But yeah, this is definitely a good history book to get you started. Because, you know, you can stop. You can go, what is he talking about? And look it up online. There's a Wikipedia page for literally everything. You'll figure it out. So... 13,979 reviews on Goodreads with a 4.24 rating. Pretty good. Out of five, that's pretty good. Very good. So yeah, it was a touch info dump at times. You know, lots of dates, lots of names. But I mean, it's nonfiction. It's a history book, like... Like, what is it even? Like, it's it's tagged as history on the back, so I'm tagged as humor like it is in fucking everything else that I looked at. It's literally a history book with opinions. So, one thing I will say I really enjoyed... Two things. Two things I really enjoyed about this book. Number one, when he is talking about activists or, you know, political leaders, um, just anybody important in history who was Indigenous... Just in brackets behind their name, it says their band or their tribe. I was like, I enjoy that. Like, thank you for telling me. Like, I'd have no idea otherwise. You've given me a reference of, like, what their kind of culture is like in their tribe slash band, whatever it is, you know? So now I know, oh, they're from this region. They're like, they were into this kind of thing, you know? I get that little bit of like, okay, this, this makes sense in the context of this. And like, cause like reading names, like I wouldn't know from names what kind of tribe they came from. I wouldn't know. I really enjoy Helen, Thomas's wife. Um, he writes as if she's talking to him every once in a while, just like Helen says this. And I'm like, but you know, and goes off on a, you know, a big paragraph about it and I was like I like Helen <laughs> she's you know well why aren't you gonna talk about this that's an important thing to talk about and I'm like yeah Helen it is us fucking white people need this shit <laughs> so those are probably my two favorite things about it but I mean otherwise it's just it's a history book it read like a history book with opinions and that's kind of a thi that's it's a good thing it's a good thing because you read a lot of nonfiction books, if, if, you know, and they're covering like a specific topic and it'll say, you know, such, 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 and you're like, all right. And you wonder how much of it is biased because of the author and their preferences of whatever it is you're reading about. Whereas this, you know, <laughs> he is indigenous. He's going to have opinions about indigenous relations and land ownership and residential schools and like... He gonna have the opinion and it's good to know that like it's there you're like okay well clearly I was wrong about this you know and I mean even even amongst all of them there's diverse of people as we all are oh, well, like they're diverse people so like someone on the fucking Salish coast is not gonna be this thinking the same thing as like someone on the plains or someone in like fucking Newfoundland like it's not going to be the same opinion. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's just how it works. So yeah, I appreciated the fact that it was not straight info dump like history, history, history. And I think that makes it more readable if you are kind of like getting into the nonfiction of indigenous relations, etc. 
for the first time. I mean, you're a little late to the game, but I won't fault you. I will fault the people who go, mm, it was totally normal for residential schools to have graves. Like, excuse me, what? No school should have a grave. <laughs> like, how fucked in the head do you have to be to think that it's totally normal for a school to have a graveyard? Like, seriously, what is wrong with those people? What is wrong with them? I don't... Okay. Off topic. Slightly. <laughs> so, yeah. Good ratings. It'll get you there. It'll tell you what you need to know. That's it. Done. There we are. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you around next time.